Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Welcome once again to the Third and Fourth Angels Ministries. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, we will be reviewing the landmarks of the remnant. We will also be reviewing much information. We'd like you to take notes. We also ask for your prayers for brothers and sisters who are making decisions for baptism. And we ask for your blessings and your prayers for those who are incarcerated around the world. We also ask for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all our brothers and sisters in the world. Receive the truth. Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. We'd like to invite you to have a word of prayer. For those who are able, let us kneel. Our Father who art in heaven, Holy, 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 Yeshua. We ask for your imputed part of righteousness upon us. We bring this work before you and ask that you may empower us with thy spirit. And while I am preaching and teaching, my ears are attentive unto thy small, still voice, thy Holy Spirit. We ask for your spirit upon us, Yeshua, upon all our brothers and sisters in the world, even those we do not know. We pray for them. Who are studying to keep your commandments and to have a love for you as you have loved us. May the meditation of my mind be directed by you. That my words may be interpreted unto thy people. Bless them, sanctify them, and regenerate our spirit, their spirit, with your Holy Spirit. By the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach and for his sake and for his glory, we pray. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. Glory Amen. to you, Yeshua. <coughs> I 
on behalf of the Third World Angels Ministries. Our foundation is found in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 12, and verse 13. Their words do follow them, which is our key text this morning. In verses 14 through 19, is the three angels' message being repeated in the harvest. Fourth angel was found in Revelation 18, verses 1 through 5, empowering the people to give the message. For further information, feel free to call 540-370-1844, or you may email 7danielrevelation at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we will finally have the website www.egworiginals.org up and running. For those of you who are ordering books, continuing to order Bibles or various types of books, feel free to pay through paypal.me forward slash lastevents.com. We emphasize, please subscribe to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. It will save you the calls coming in. Sometimes we're not able to respond back to your calls because there's no one in and people are working and preparing in various areas of ministry. Please ring the bell, ladies and gentlemen, so that you may get the free notifications in regards to the studies that are coming out each week. Once again, on behalf of the Third Angels Ministries, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, let's enter into a word of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, blessed be thy holy name, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, who is holy and faithful and true. As we open thy word with anticipation and expectation, we ask for your grace and your mercy upon us, and thy favor. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Our topic Pillars and Landmarks of Our Faith. Turn to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. And we will read Revelation chapter 14. Uh, we will focus on verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. For those of you who are Ready? Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 and verse 13. And read in your hearing. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of Yeshua HaMashiach. This verse refers to the 144,000. Verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Elohim from henceforth. Yeah, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their laborers, and their works do follow them. Is our key text. And may this blessing be added to our brothers and sisters that have gone before us as a people. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our seven pillars, plus three. Seven pillars of our faith, the health message found in Leviticus chapter 11. State of the dead found in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. The spirit of prophecy, referring to volumes 1, 2, and 3. The sanctuary message that was given to us from the days of old, the time of Moses. The law of Elohim that stands the pinnacle of his government in Leviticus chapter 23, Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Victory over sin from Genesis to Revelation. Righteousness by faith. And it was given to us by James Wagner and others. Pillars and landmarks of our faith is our topic. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the foundation of his remnant people. Seven key points. This is the foundation, and there's more. So as we notice, ladies and gentlemen, the Godhead, Trinity is never mentioned. In the conversation of the prophet Alan Goldwhite, it was only mentioned one with a group of people. That's all. In all actuality, ladies and gentlemen, this false doctrine of Luciferian teachings came in to the remnant church, splintered 
people across the world causing chaos and division. It was written that in the last days, small companies would be gathering together and causing chaos, mess. This is what's happened. This is how it's going to finish. But there will be a remnant that will come out. They will be carrying seven of these doctrines and more. In the Moedines is found in Leviticus chapter 23. Statutes, judgments, ordinances are the foundation of Yahweh's kingdom in heaven. And so when our Savior wrote those Ten Commandments on his foundation, the Father got his hand and wrote it. They were written in Sephar blue. And he gave them to Moses. When Moses received them, they were Sephar blue, my brothers and sisters. That no eye has ever seen but Moses. So when we look up into the heavens, we see blue. Blue represents obedience to keep his Ten Commandments. That's the color of blue, is obedience to keep his law. That's biblical, that's in scripture. All these colors have a biblical spiritual meaning behind it in what white means, yellow means, red means, black means, brown means. But blue speaking specifically refers to his Torah, 613 laws. Including in the 613 laws is his statute. For example, 2707, it's in the feminine. 2708, it's in the feminine. It's a Hebrew statute. Number two, judgments. 2707, it's in the feminine, permanently binding. Ordinances, number 2707, it's in the Hebrew. It's an ordinance. These laws are binding. However, 2706, was nailed to the cross in 31 AD, dealt with the animal sacrifices. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. These laws were nailed to the cross, brothers and sisters. These issues need to be understood so that you may be able to preach the three angels' messages so that when all questions are asked of the laws, you may be found worthy to freely give them your ans the answers that have been given to us in Scripture. So that the people can comprehend which laws are binding today. So that our Savior may see them in Isaiah chapter 20 verse 16. Bind the Torah among my disciples. And this is what's taking place now. Which is the sealing of his people. So when the third angel comes he may seal you on your forehead. That no eye, no man can ever see. But the Father and the angel. So when the death angel comes. He sees the name of the Father on your forehead. And I hear a name in your frontal lobe. These statutes, judgments, and ordinances are in the feminine, meaning permanently binding forever. They're existing. It's Hebrew, brothers and sisters. Now, when you read statutes, 2706, it's in the masculine. It's nailed to the cross. This is more theology that you can comprehend as I share this with you slowly, as I shared with you numerous of other studies that are on TV that you can go back and retrack and study for your life. These are the Moadim. This is the foundation of Yahweh's kingdom, my brothers and sisters. So Exodus 20 verses 8 to 11 is the Holy Sabbath. In Leviticus, on the screen, Leviticus 23, verses 1 through 4, is the weekly Sabbath. And he begins to introduce the Moadines throughout the scriptures from Leviticus 23, verses 5 to 44. And what they did, along with the Catholic Church and other denominations, is that they annihilated everything so that the world and society and them as well would crucify Yeshua of flesh and not keep his holy holidays. That's why evangelist John Brandenburg wrote the book, Holy History. Holy History of what? Of what was binding to today. That's why Richard and Maldi Drake put together Holy History. So that you can see the synopsis of the whole prophecy in regards to the Moedims. 
That's why the brother in New York wrote the Sabbath and why the issues are so important, so vital for salvation, my brothers and sisters. That's why the book Trinity was put together so we can comprehend these doctrines, these teachings that came in from hell to deceive the world and to take them into the lake of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, you got people all over the world of all denominations writing on the Trinity and they themselves got a PhD. Mercy, brothers, because where in the world did they find that? Because it's not in Scripture. All you have to do is go to John chapter 20 and read the whole book of John, or you may read segments of the Scriptures to find out who and what is the Holy Spirit. So when you read He, Him, they're saying, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. He's got a character. He's got a personality. Of course He's got a character personality because it's Yeshua HaMashiach. It's Jesus Christ in the Western culture. And I hear an amen. That's who it is. You see, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit doesn't give blood, doesn't spill blood. The Holy Spirit cannot be pierced. You can't see it. It is the manifestation of the power of the Father that was given to Yeshua on the Feast of Weeks, which is the highest gift that heaven can bestow upon humanity through His Son who was found worthy, crucified on the cross. Stripped naked. He was naked, brothers. Everything was being shown. What a disgrace. But He went through it. And he never murmured one word when the nails pierced his head, his palms, Psalms chapter 22. This is the character and the characteristics and the sufferings of what the Messiah went through. So these feasts, these Moedims, is refers to his first advent of his crucifixion. The fall feast represents the resurrection of the righteous and the translation of the 144,000. This is what it's all meaning, my brothers and sisters. So these Gentiles and these Hebrews turned around and nailed all this to the cross because they rejected the messages. Now the people are waking up and they're coming out, forming their groups. What did the prophet say? That in the last days, small groups would be forming, signifying the second coming in these last days of Yeshua HaMashiach that would be causing confusion, distress, anxiety rejection of the truth. These are the pillars. Total is ten. Binding forever. The messenger Ellen White says that not one pin is to be removed from the pillars foundation or way marks of our faith. In spending several hours researching exactly what these pillars are, brothers and sisters, what are these pillars that are never to be removed or tampered with? They are the basic doctrines of our faith, such as the following. So the first angel was already beginning to proclaim, judgment of the living has come. We are in a transition, brothers and sisters. The first angel's message terminated in 1844. It terminated after it gave its job of intellectual knowledge to the world in quick succession in 10 weeks. It terminated October 22nd, 1844, Day of Atonement, Judgment, hit the house all over the world. For example, 10 key points. The seven day Sabbath, Exodus 20, 8 through 11. The state of the dead from Genesis to Revelation. The second coming found in Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21, Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 17. The three angels' messages found in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 19. Creation, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 4, the whole book of Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, the Torah, talks about creation and establishment, the personality of Elohim, God, the Godhead. It doesn't talk about a trinity, brothers and sisters, which is the mark of the beast. You want the mark of the beast? You go ahead and continue believing in the Trinity, and we'll see our brothers and sisters who are righteous in the kingdom. But the rest will go to the damnation, fire of hell. Number seven, keeping the commandments. John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. A sanctuary found in the book of Exodus, chapter 77, verse 13. Thy way, O Yahweh, is in the sanctuary. The fall of man, beginning from the beginning of Genesis, to the end of Revelation chapter 22. The Day of Atonement talks about the Moedines. 
talks about the feast days, talks about the feast of weeks, talks about Pentecost. These are doctrines that Yeshua HaMashiach established on the earth through his prophets, established it in the kingdom. So what takes place in the kingdom takes place on the earth. How in the world can mankind reject his laws, his love for mankind, other than the Uthapur saying himself, Hasatan, the devil, who did all this? This is why there's wars, this is why there's fighting, this is why there's arguing. It's because the unanimous physiology of the human being and his frontal lobe is not able to obtain and bring this body under subjection, lest we become castaways. This must be done with marriages. This must be done with single people. This must be done with children. But we need to learn why. We need to learn the solutions, the keys that need to be practiced day in and day out of our life. This is why there are wars, ladies and gentlemen, because the mind cannot be obtained and controlled without the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is something that is needed. This is an experience, ladies and gentlemen, that will take hours in teaching. And just because we get angry because issues are taking place, it's not that we're angry for an unrighteous cause, it's we're angry because of disappointment of not preparing for the Sabbath. Issues that are being done, breaking the Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen, we have to be holy. We've had six days to do this. And we think that we're keeping the Sabbath today, then it's holy, it's acceptable, well, it is, but there's matters that are being done that should not be done. The first and the second and third angels' messages are proclaiming all ten doctrines, brothers and sisters, as I speak to you. We must not think, well, we have all the truths, as many Seventh-day Adventists and Christians and Pentecostals and Catholics are saying, and Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. The main pillars of our faith. We must not think, well, we have all the truths, we understand the main pillars of our faith. What is your faith, brothers and sisters? And we may rest on this knowledge, and you better believe it. The truth is an advancing truth. The first angel proclaims it. And we must walk in the increasing light that we receive. And the reason why we walk in the increasing light that we receive is because that prophet, Mel or Fema, was inspired, and they dictated and wrote what was to be given to the whole world, not to just one nationality. It's to be given to the whole world because they're all sinners. They're all filthy, ugly sinners that do not want to wake up. And when these ugly, filthy sinners wake up, they become new people. They become beautiful people that carry the character of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. You cannot be in Congress, you cannot be in the Senate, you cannot be in law enforcement and claim to know Christ when you're breaking the commandments. You can't do that, brothers and sisters. When they pierced our Savior, that centurion felt that same wound. And when he seen what had happened, he seen that this was the son of Elohim, Yahweh. Can you imagine the tears coming from his eyes? He had a legion of soldiers, brothers and sisters, that he had to lead. But he seen the witnessing and the communication that Yeshua gave in front of his face. They pulled his beard. They pulled his hair. They whipped him. And then they had the audacity to strip him naked, to show his genitals and lift him up on that cross to the world. What a shame. But Christ says, Father, forgive them. So they know not what they do. And I say the same. Because we have been lied. We have been cheated. There have been remarriages. There have been disruptive Influences in our homes, the kids, and children, and their children. It's time now to grab a hold of Yeshua and to hold on to his seat seats that he may bless us, that he may make us whole again. Many of us have fallen away from the faith. Many groups have started different denominations. We're all at fault, but when we come to the cross of Yeshua HaMashiach and remember what he did for us, then can we can recall the pillars of our faith, the foundation of a remnant that is holy, and strive to be among them with all our strength, with all our being, 
as we have been told. CW 33, paragraph 2. Special Testimony Series B, number 2, page 51, 1904, Councils to Writers and Editors, page 52. The first, second, and third angel's message it says, As a people, we are to stand firm on the platform of eternal truth that has withstood test and trial. We are to hold to the sure pillars of our faith. The principles of truth that God has revealed to us are our only true foundation. They have made us what we are. The lapse of time had not lessened their value. Do you hear that? The lapse of time has not lessened their value. They are still holy. Principles that have been given to us as a people so that we may give Bible studies and bring people out of confusion, out of their homes, out of their dungeons, out of these jails, out of these prisons. Ladies and gentlemen, we are prisoned in this world of sin. And many of us don't want to be here. We want to go to heaven, but we're not ready, brothers and sisters, because we haven't passed the test. We have to be tried in the fire. We have to give up all this murmuring. We have to put the books together and look at the correct prophecies, the panorama of the second coming, to prepare for his coming. We cannot reach for perfection, nor reach his whole character. We have not obtained, brothers and sisters, because our Savior has not given that to us yet. In Song of Songs, he will bring us to maturity because we are unable to bring ourselves to maturity. It is Christ's work to bring every human being to maturity. Can I hear an amen? When people are angry, they're angry for a righteous cause when they're preaching because of issues that have taken place, my brothers and sisters. Our Savior rebuked the people in the marketplace and he whipped them. And he cleaned up the house and let them know that his sanctuary, his father's house, is not a marketplace of business. You don't do that. How sincere and how sensitive this is. We don't do no business on the Sabbath. We prepare for this day, brothers and sisters, because it belongs to him and he gave it to us that we may enter it in six days of toiling and working, fighting and loving. We may rest from our own labors. It is given to us freely. Can I hear an amen? In reading from the 1884 Great Controversy, I'd like to share a few key points. I didn't want to miss this opportunity, so I want to share this point with us. Why are the doctrine and preaching of Christ's second coming so offensive to the churches? You'll find this reading in 1884 Great Controversy, page 215, paragraph 2. When Jesus made known to his disciples that he must be separated from them, he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. When he ascended from all of it, the compassionate Savior, anticipating the loneliness and sorrow of his followers, commissioned the angels to com comfort them, with the assurance that he would come again in person, even as he went into heaven. In other words, he ascended into the chambers, through the clouds. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, is alive in human form, spirit form. As the disciples stood gazing intently upward to catch the last glimpse of him, whom they loved, their attention was arrested by the words, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Hope was kindled afresh by the angel's message. The disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. They were not rejoicing because Jesus had been separated from them and they were 
left to struggle with the trials of temptation of the world. But because of the angel's assurance that he would come again, those who really love the Savior cannot but hail with joy a message founded upon the Word of God. The He in whom their hopes of eternal life are centered is coming again, not to be insulted, despised, and rejected as at His first advent, but in power and glory to redeem His people. May we be them that he may redeem for his glory. In all truth, brothers and sisters, we are his trophies. Hear an amen? Mm -hmm. We are his trophies. Mm -hmm. Special Testimony Series B, number 2, page 51, 1904, Councils to Writers and Editors. This is correct. Three angels are flying in the midst of heaven, proclaiming, putting the above two quotes together. Ellen White is saying that the pillars or foundations of our faith are correct, and unchangeable. However, truth outside of the, these pillars is advancing, and therefore we need to study hard and accept the advancing light that God is sending on these truths outside of the pillars of our faith. This is why we need to know what constitute the pillars so we know what is not to be tampered with. Can I hear an amen? amen. This is salvational, my brothers and sisters. This is why many speakers, Stephen Bohr, Doug Bassler, Kenneth Cox, Walter Weiss, Ed Wilson, President of Seventh-day Adventist Church, pastors, evangelists, many other pastors in Florida, many pastors in Tennessee, Maryland, Virginia, California, Canada, Mexico, Australia, Hong Kong, Korea, Russia. China, Asia, Guam. We all need to be on the same page. We don't have to be worried in regards to confusion because the message has already been given to us. But the organization changed the books. That's the problem. Our test now is in the books. Our ceiling, it's in the correct messages. I am now going to give an example of corruption in early writings that was not dictated nor written by Ellen White. This is a compilation, rewritten, and I will share the scenario in early writings. You can go and get early writings if you like. Page 258, 259. Okay, 1858. Corrupt book. In reading your hearing, first paragraph. I saw a company who stood well guarded and firm giving no conscience to those who would unsettle the established faith of the body. God looked upon them with approbation. Paragraph 2. Once again, she says, the first one she says, I saw a company. Number 2, I was shown. Now she's being shown. Visually, she's seen it. I was shown three steps. One, the first, second, and third angels' messages, plural. Revelation 14 said, My accompanying angel, focus on how they change the words here at the next phrase, at the next slide. Said, My angel, no, said, My accompanying angel, Woe to him who shall move a block, here's the key, Woe to him who shall move a block or stir a pin of these messages. And this is what they did. The true understanding of these messages is of vital importance to the destiny of souls hangs upon the manner in which they are received. And this is what we're giving to you now at the anniversary of the Reformation with Martin Luther. October 31st, 2020. Number three, I was again. Now, the first one says, I was, I saw a company. Number two says, I was shown. Number three says, I was again. Repeat it now. Brought down through these messages. She understood it now. And saw how dearly the people of God had purchased their experience. It had been obtained through much suffering. <coughs> Excuse me. And severe conflict. God had led them along step by step. 
until he had placed them upon a solid, immovable platform. This is what happened, my brothers and sisters. These three phrases that I have here on the screen for you are not correct. But Mark Finley and many other speakers and many other, in other words, speakers of every church or self-supported minister, independent ministry, who is ever speaking in groups or church home, you're all using this corrupt book. It has no blessing, no sanctification, no holiness, and you're not being made whole in character. Something else crept in here and changed the writings. All three paragraphs. Okay. You've taken the, your notes down. Now we're going to see the correct message. However, we got three angels all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. It's given this message time and time again. Time and time again. And it's going to continue until the second time, until the second coming. So he has a peace. And right now he's making up his people. They stopped the reformation back then because they stopped protesting. That's why the reformation stopped. They stopped the 2520 back in 1882. And that's why the 2520 stopped because of the reformation as well. Number one. Here's the correct reading, 1858 Great Controversy, page 168-169. And reading your hearing, I saw a company who stood well guarded and firm, comma, and would give no conscience to those who would unsettle the established faith of the body. You notice how I said established faith? God looked upon them with approbation. Approbation, that's a key word. I was shown three steps. One two, and three. The first, second, and third angel's messages. Now listen here now. Said the angel, Woe to him who shall move a block or stir a pin in these messages. Woe to him. So they changed everything that was in the 1858 Great Controversy and they turned around and had the audacity to write early writings when it says, I saw a company who stood well guarded and firm, giving no conscience to those who would unsettle the established faith of the body, and looked upon them with approbation. However, brothers and sisters, I was shown three steps. One, two, three. The first, second, and third angel's messages said the angel, Woe to him who shall move a block. They did that. Or stir a pin. They did that in these messages. That's why you have a compiled false book early writings when you should read it from the 1858 edition which is the real dictation that's been blessed after made holy why why do you want to read something watered down anyway if you want his character you want to do his work you want to preach three angels messages then why don't you read the original dictation that the prophet gave why is everybody so hard-hearted why is everybody having so much hate are you afraid of the truth brothers and sisters the true understanding of these messages is of vital importance. Listen to what the, our Savior is saying to the prophet. The destiny of souls hangs upon the manner in which they are received. 1858 Great Controversy, page 168-169, not early writings. Please note, and I'm going to say this kindly. The Seventh-day Adventist Committee changed the writing. That's who changed it. It wasn't Catholics. It wasn't Jesuits. It wasn't Mormons or Protestants. So get all that mind out of your mind. It was our own Seventh-day Adventist members and officials of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that was organized in 1863. Bottom line. They became a corporation that was signed in there by Neil Wilson, president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the father of Ted Wilson. Number one, the third book was Alan G. White, 1858 Great Controversy, which is the correct prophecies. So the first book she wrote was Experience and Views, 1851. In the year of 1855, she began to write and dictate as the messages were given to her 
by Jesus Christ, and the angel guided her. Began in the year 1855. 1855. Three years later, she completed the 1858 Great Controversy. So the dictation and the notes that we are receiving that is being given to you, brothers and sisters, who are viewing at this moment are the correct messages for the 144,000 to wake up the remaining multitude in the world. Because you're the barley hearts. You're the first fruits that are going to be sealed and tried. Yes. You're going to be ascended to the kingdom without seeing death. We're to give this message, brothers and sisters, unadulterated. We're to receive blessings and blessings and blessings of what? Giving the messages. Our Savior will provide the food and the water. Our protection, the covering is put upon us, on you. That no harm will come near you. No, the Seventh-day Adventist Committee changed the writings. Number one, the third book was Ellen G. White, 1858 Great Controversy. This is the correct prophecies. Number two, the changes in copyright 1882 began. There's a corrupt change the prophecies in early writings. So the first copyright took place in 1882. And they did that after the law was passed. And then they changed the prophecies. The corrupt book, early writings. Number three, copyright 1945, which is corrupt. Changed the prophecies. So number one, 1850 Great Controversy prophecies, oh, they're all correct. Number two, the copyright took place and changed it and wrote early writings, 1882, which changed the prophecies, the corrupt book. Number three, the copyright took place again, 1945, changed the prophecies, early writings, continued to solicit false teachings to the world. That's what they did. Air and truth, air and truth, air and truth. Number four, Copyright, the year 2000, changed the prophecies, continued with early writings. So you have three witnesses. The first one is the 1858 correct prophecies. They were written and given to us. You got homework. Because if you think you're going to give the prophecies with early writings, sent, you all got another thing coming because that ain't ever going to happen. Yeshua said so. Continuing, the three angels proclaim, and the prophet says, I was again brought down through these messages and saw how dearly the people of God had purchased their experience. Well, they did. It had been obtained through much suffering and severe conflict. Step by step had God brought them along until he had placed them upon a solid, immovable platform. Can I hear an amen? Then I saw individuals as they approached the platform before stepping upon it Examine the foundation by Catholics and Jews and Jesuits and Protestants and Baptists and Jehovah's Witnesses. Some with rejoicing immediately stepped upon it. Others commenced to find fault with the laying of the foundation of the platform. 1858 Great Controversy, page 168 and 169, correct prophecy that was proclaimed prior to it taking place, my brothers and sisters. The prophet spoke. A, early writings is not biblically correct. B, the dictation has been removed, Laodicea. C, the people are not being sealed in heirs. And you can take that to court. In other words, heaven. They're not being sealed in heirs, and they never will be. Our Savior doesn't need Plagiarism, our Savior doesn't need heirs of books being changed. He doesn't need people who have been changed in the scriptures, the Septuagint writings, Hesus Receptus. Time and time again, throughout the Bible, every book has been attempted to be changed by brothers and sisters. And when you're watching these televisions with History Channel, etc., bringing out a bunch of garbage, some of it is correct, but it's mixed with error truth. And then you have people spending thousands of dollars going to the Middle East, 
doing their excavations, doing their trials and their formats, brothers and sisters, that King James Bible is correct to the core. The authorized King James Bible. But our Savior, as he says in the 1858 Great Controversy, 107, 117, the, eight, the Great Controversy is immortalized. The Bible, it is immortalized. You can burn them, you can change them, you can do whatever you want, but the correct message is going to go through. And when everything is done and said, brothers and sisters, there won't be no need of Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. There won't be no need of Testimonies, Volumes 1 through 30. There won't be no need of Messengers to the Remnant. There won't be no need of Holy History. There won't be no need of the Kellogg File. There won't be no need of Special Testimony Series A, Special Testimony Series B. There won't be no need of any Bibles any longer. Because the bookwork, the correct messages, did their job. 1844 and the second coming. Now, brothers and sisters, you can say, Great, hallelujah. How do I get the messages? Well, first of all, we need to pray. We need to pray and ask, Is this this will for me, my father? I'm already revealing it to him. Continuing. 7,000 years that I mentioned earlier in the last study. Now, rephrase it quite quickly from genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 creation was 24 hours daily that day genesis 5 3 to 29 this is the first period of time 1000 year period the flood took place in genesis chapter 11 verses 10 to 26 second period of time second thousand year period the transition from the second to the third thousand year period is with Abraham to King David. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, you have three generations. This is the third period of time, 3,000 year period. Abraham to David. From David to the captivity, King David, you have Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, which is the 4,000 year period of time. However, Walter Weiss agrees on the 4,000 year period. It's biblical, it's applicable. And as he says, and I'll repeat, Walter Weiss says, I don't want to know what the pastors or the preachers or the evangelists have to say. I don't want to know what you have to say. He says, I want to know what the spirit of prophecy has to say. But to clarify and to make a correction, Elder Walter Weiss, professor, the only spirit of prophecy is volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's spirit of prophecy. <clears throat> Elder Walter Weiss, Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. These are the Spirit of Prophecy, right here. Everything she wrote, or behind me and elsewhere, is not the Spirit of Prophecy. Those are the writings of Ellen White with other names. Spirit of Prophecy is Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's Spirit of Prophecy. So if you want to know what she really said, you need to obtain and look or call us to get the original books. The world is listening to you, but you're giving air and truth. But you're doing the best you can, but now we need the full cup with holiness, blessings in it. So that people can be sanctified, be blessed, and be made holy through his messages, which is Christ Yeshua HaMashiach, who spilt his blood on the cross. Amen. You want the truth? You're going to get the truth. Now we come down to the 4,000 year period. From David to the captivity brings us to the 5,000 year period of Matthew 1, verse 17. And there's much on it that I can elaborate. So the, from captivity to Christ is the 5,000 year period. And from Christ to Christ's second return is the 6,000 year period. So in Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, it talks about three generations. You ladies and gentlemen, you can turn to your Bibles at this moment and turn to Matthew chapter 1. Turn to Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we've just completed a 5,000 year period. Now, there are other writings 
And I want to share this, specifically going out to Elder Walter White. You cannot use the Tsar of Ages in regards to Ellen White dictated that and says 6,000 year period. You can't use that because that's not where it's coming from. She didn't dictate that there. This is the writings of a Jesuit, Samuel J. Andrews. And you're very studious. You can look it up. You can attain the book and you can compare the book, Our Lord Upon the Earth with the Tsar of Ages, and you can see how it all comes out. Now, the first three chapters, they come from the book entitled Our Lord Upon the Earth. And from chapter 4 to the end of it, the Tsar of Ages is a synopsis of the book's writings, of his writings. Chapter 4 to the end of the book of the Tsar of Ages is a synopsis, let me share with you, is a synopsis of the Review and Herald articles, volume 3 and 4 and follow. That's where the information is coming from. It was first written in newspapers, and Ellen White and her husband were putting out, and then from there, the committee turned around and compiled it and put it together in Review and Hell articles. That's why these six books are the sizes that they are. Okay? So when you read the word over, Ellen White never wrote that, and that's correct, because you need to read the correct messages so that you can have your little thesis done correctly and present to the world in regards to a 6,000 year period. And I am overwhelmed too and excited to know how you are doing your math, your calculation. But you need the correct messages from the prophet, the pain of inspiration. Okay? I said this in respect to you and in respect to our brothers and sisters in the world who are Seventh-day Adventists. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, but I'm not going to continue, as I told Colin Standish, Pastor Colin Standish, with this mess of apostasy in the Seventh-day Adventist church. I don't deal with it. I want to be a part of that remnant, that, that procession is taking place present tense, to be tried in the fire, and to be found faithful to give this message and to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, receive that baptism, and to receive those gifts in order to give the message in its fullness and to give this loud cry. I want to be among those people. Many other people are desiring and striving to be. So here, ladies and gentlemen, from Christ to Christ's return is a transition where the arrow's pointing in how Soon, a 6,000-year period is coming to an end. But it cannot come to an end until we re-evangelize and give the first, second, third angels' messages, understanding the correct messages in its purity as it was dictated by the Holy Spirit. Then we come down to the seventh period, the 7,000-year period, which is a sabbatical rest. This sabbatical rest, brothers and sisters, dealing with Genesis chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, the seventh day of the week is a Sabbath today. So in this whole week, you got one whole week, you got one whole 6,000 year period. And every day was a 24 hour day of creation. So we've entered into the Sabbath that he blessed unto and made holy for his glory to give reverence to him, Yeshua HaMashiach. So here, ladies and gentlemen, in the 1858 Great Controversy, page 205, 206, then commenced the Jubilee Sabbath rest. This will correlate with your studies, Elder Walter Weiss, that you have given. Continuing. So here's just a synopsis of a 6,000 year period. In the future, and I do mean in the future, deception of every kind is to arise. And we want solid ground for our feet. And that's what we want present tense. The angels in heaven are looking at us as a skeptical of what we have been doing to each other. And they were fearful to have humans to live among them. And this is why we have to be tried in the fire to be found worthy to receive eternal life. And once again, in the future, deception of every kind is to arise, present tense. And that's already started. And we want solid ground for our feet. We want solid pillars, brothers and sisters, for the building of character in the anatomy and physiology of every human being in the world. Not one pin is to be removed from that which the Lord has established. Not one pin. The enemy will bring in false theories, such as the doctrine that there is no sanctuary, the doctrine that there is no sanctuary whatsoever, except the Adventist pastors are preaching around the world and Protestants naming other denominations. 
that there is no sanctuary in the heaven when everything comes out of the sanctuary. This whole Bible comes out of the sanctuary. It came from heaven and was given to Moses as a replica to be on the earth so that our Savior may dwell among them, that all the tribes will be gathered around them, millions of them. And at night, the light would be shown hovering over the sanctuary. Ladies and gentlemen, have you lost sight of Christ's ministry? The enemy will continue to bring in false theories, such as the doctrine that there is no sanctuary. Exodus chapter. This is one of the points on which there will be a departing from the faith. Where shall we find safety unless it be in the truth that the Lord has been giving for the last 50 years, brothers and sisters? Last 50 years. So you want to come back from 1905. You want to come back 50 years. And those 50 years is when they had the committee to change the writings of the spirit of prophecy. And those in that committee, these men was G.I. Butler, Willie White, who established the committee and chose the men, Haskell Uriah Smith, and Wagner Sr. These were the five men that changed the testimonies. Your reference is found in the review and Herald, May 25th, 1905. And the angels are looking at us every moment. Now I will give you a quick view of what they did. Now the correct reading reads the coming conflict. Thing in the red is what they insert. Thing that I'm going to share with you in red on the screen is what they inserted, brothers and sisters. When I read it, I'm going to read everything in the blue, which is dictated, blessed, sanctified, and holy. I'm not going to read to you what's in the red. The correct reading of the chapter is the coming conflict. And it was written in numeral numbers. XXXBI, which is number 36. When you're reading your 1911, 1888, 1907 great controversies, it would read the impending conflict, chapter 36. That's how we would read. The correct reading that was dictated by the pen of inspiration, the coming conflict, chapter 36. In reading and in your blessing and your hearing, is as follows. Many have come to deny doctrines which are the very pillars of the Christian faith. The great facts of creation as presented by the inspired writers, notice how she says, inspired writers, the fall of man, the atonement, the day of atonement, which is a feast, and the perpetuity of the law of God are practically rejected. Now there's no comma, it continues, by a large share of the professedly Christian world, period. She says, by a large share of the professedly Christian world. She says, everybody, all of us, in reading your hearing, thousands who pride themselves upon their wisdom and independence regarded an evidence of weakness to place implicit confidence in the Bible. Comma, continuing, and a proof of superior talent and learning to cavil at the scriptures, comma, and to spiritualize and explain away their most important truths. 1884 Great Controversy, page 398, paragraph 3. And what they did is that they turned around and broke the rule in Revelation chapter 22, 18 and 19, when our Savior says, not one jot nor one tittle shall be added to his writings, or they shall receive the seven last plagues that are written in this book. That book means scroll. Okay? So these people who did this mess and led people astray, thinking differently, and building their character on the fallen being of Lucifer, judgment has come to them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the 144,000 are teaching is to grab the correct manuscripts and let that be a foundation on your frontal lobe that you may develop his character. So they turned around, ladies and gentlemen, and trifled with the writings of inspiration. 
They removed the Holy Spirit's writings and inserted fallen man's preconceived ideas to make it suit their fallen nature of beliefs. Continuing, the impending conflict, chapter 36, reads as follows. Everything in the blue was omitted, my brothers and sisters, and they inserted everything in the red. Okay, so you haven't read this. You haven't read this in the other great controversies. This is why the book, ladies and gentlemen, entitled The Great Controversy Between Christ and His Angels and Satan and His Angels has been prepared for you, for your salvation. This is the main book. And this is why we prepared it. Now, compare the 1911 Great Controversy and the 1884 Great Controversy. This book is available. And I implore you, get your book before we run out. Ladies and gentlemen, this book holds so much information you have no idea. There might be others that are struggling, trying, trying to learn what's in here, but ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. The 1858 Great Controversy, <clears throat> the 1858 Great Controversy, let me get it for you. The 1858 Great Controversy is correct. Oh, it's sanctified. It's a fifth grade level education. Once again, the 1858 Great Controversy is a fifth grade level education. Okay? The 1884 Great Controversy, 1884 Great Controversy, it's a college level education. This is why some of you are having a hard time understanding. It's a college level education. And this is what it means to mature in his holy character that you can obtain and contain in this frontal lobe. Some of us cannot contain it because we haven't repented. And if we have, we continue with these fallen problems. We must bring this body under subjection and be holy and let his spirit, his gift, his manifestation live in us and mold us into his image, not Richard's image. I don't want that. In reading your hearing, in the blue they removed it, in the red they inserted it, continuing with the paragraph that we're reading here. In reading, a proof of superior talent and learning to cavil at the scriptures and to spiritualize and explain away their most important truths. Many ministers are teaching their people and many professors and teachers are instructing their students that the law of God has been changed or abrogated. And they ridicule those who are simple-minded. Now listen to me. They ridicule those who are simple-minded as to acknowledge all its claims. This is the correct prophecy. But they turned around and removed it and inserted it in the red. Those who regard its requirements is as still valid to be literally obeyed are thought to be deserving only if only of ridicule or contempt. This is what they inserted and removed what's on the top that's been dictated. That's a sin, brothers and sisters. Now we comprehend what's in the book. Now in all actuality, ladies and gentlemen, if your pastors and your ministers, it doesn't matter who they are, even myself, you're not preaching the truth and you haven't done your studies in the correct books, then we're in trouble. And it's chaos. This is going to continue to the end. But those people who are called, who hear his voice, those people who hear his voice through the scriptures and through witnesses that are coming to them and giving them Bible studies, you're all going to come out of these fallen churches. And you're going to be tried and you're going to be part of this procession. It's going to make up a remnant. There's only a remnant in these last days, ladies and gentlemen. We're going through it. It's not fully formed yet. There's much that has to be done, but it's going to be done very quickly. Now is the time to take your place spiritually in his kingdom. And to get rebaptized because you receive new light and new backslid, or get baptized because 
You were born a sinner. We need to be baptized in the immersion of water to be born again. And to learn to control this vessel and bring it into subjection daily. We're going to have trials. And if we're not having trials, then something's wrong. Because we're going to have trials. And we need to learn to be perfect and to raise our children with the strictest principles. When we raise up our children, we know they might go astray, but ladies and gentlemen, they're going to return back to Yeshua. There's a blessing upon them. There's a halo on them. Because you've dedicated them to him, Yeshua HaMashiach. He's taking care of our children, your children. Our faith in reference to the messages of the first, second, and third angels was correct. And you better believe it. All heavens and angels are looking at this. The great wave marks we have passed are immovable. Although the host of hell may try to tear them from their foundation and triumph in the thought that they have succeeded, yet they do not succeed. These pillars of truth stand firm as the eternal hills unmoved by all the efforts of men combined with those of Satan and his host. Evangelism, page 222 to 223. So all these printing groups that are all over the world that are printing books, they're printing books of a new order. They don't know it. They think that Ellen White wrote it. No, she didn't. And like I told Review and Herald, in a 10-year period, every five years I was called into the meetings with them. They wanted to know the truth. So Richard spilled the beans. He opened the can from the top and he opened the can from the bottom and all the worms came out and the truth pierced their heart, soul, and mind. Now the Review and Herald is closed. And it wasn't because of funds. It's because it was dictated and driven by Jesuits to close our printed houses down. So the message wouldn't go out any longer. The three angels messages, they turned around and turned it into a hollow place. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the printing presses are coming to light. They will be printing the correct messages. The angels will be protecting the machines. The angels will be with the books. The books and the literature of angels to work will begin. And those books will be going to the clients, the people they meet. The angel will be with the people who have the book and obtain the book to see their conversion. Can I hear an amen? This is prophecy to its golden core. We can learn much and should be constantly searching the scriptures to see if these things are so. God's people are now to have their eyes fixed on the heavenly. Amen. They are to be fixed on the heavenly sanctuary for the final ministration of our great high priest, who is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And the work of the judgment is going forward. So on the earth, he was a priest. He was a priest for 33 years. But when he ascended to heaven in the year of 31 AD, on the week of unleavened bread, now remember, on the feast of unleavened bread, Passover, he ascended to heaven. And when he went to heaven, he sat on the right hand side of the Father with a crown, with a crown and a crown on his head, with diamonds and jewels that the mind of mankind cannot even fathom. This is our Savior who is praying for us, asking you to accept Him as your Savior. Won't you do that today? Amen. The final ministration of our great high priest in the work of the judgment is going forward. Where he is interceding for his people. Evangelism 222-223. The passing of the time in 1844, October 22nd, was Judgment, Day of Atonement. I inserted that, but that's what it was. It was a period of great events. Much can be discussed on this. Opening to our astonished eyes the cleansing of the sanctuary transpiring in heaven. And having decided relation to God's people on the earth, also the first and second angel's messages and the third, unflurring the banner on which was in inscribable. 
the commandments of God in the face of Jesus. I want to insert a few key points. And I want to share gently and kindly. If we do not know the first, you're not going to give the second angel's message. In Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7, if you don't know the first angel's message, which is a time message that terminated in 1844, October 22nd, and now it's to be repeated in our time, found in Revelation chapter 14, verses 15 through 19. You've got the seventh, sixth angel, the fifth angel, and the seventh angel. These three angels repeat the three angels' messages in the harvest. And we do not know the first angel's message, you're not going to give the second and third. So Revelation 8, 14, verse 8, and verses 9 through 13. And if you don't know the second, you're not definitely going to give the third. This is why we as a people have to have comprehend the history of the three angels, the premise of the three angels, and the everlasting life of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to know that. So they may be implanted in our frontal lobe, that our citadel may be able to recite and settle in the thalamus and hypothalamus and dicephalons on the right and the left in regard to what is correct holiness of truth. That we may be able to respond to our questions that are being asked from others and to be able to exalt his character in you, the hope of glory. Can I hear an amen? This is the purpose. Our Savior says, one of the landmarks under this message was the temple of Elohim, God. Seen by his truth-loving people in heaven, these are the angels, seen by the truth-loving people in heaven, and the ark containing the law of Elohim, or better yet, and the ark containing the Torah of Elohim, CW 30, paragraph 2. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be judged by this law. And there are two phases. From the beginning of time to 31 AD, you'll be judged under the law. From 31 AD to the end of time, the second coming, we'll be judged by his grace and his love and his favor, but still under the law. Not for a tooth for a tooth, a murder for a murder. No, 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 not that way. But by his grace, did you keep my commandments? Did you keep my moedines? Did you keep my health laws? Did you keep my dress code? Did you keep my son ever before you? Did you know him? If you didn't keep his statutes, the people are not going to be in the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, there's not going to be one soul in the kingdom that doesn't keep his statutes. Number two, <clears throat> let me read this to us. In reading, you're hearing. Remember the law of Moses, Hebrew word number 8451. The Torah, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horah for all Israel with the statutes and judgments, Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Number two, God will not take into his kingdom and give eternal life to those who will not come under his laws and statutes in this life. Signs of the times. September 8th, 1887. Number three. In these last days, there is a call from heaven inviting you, inviting you to keep the statutes and ordinances of the Yahweh. Signs of the Times, February 3rd, 1888 message was rejected and continued to be rejected and rejected and rejected. So therefore, brothers and sisters, everything in Leviticus chapter 23 has been rejected. It turned around and got Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. Instead of keeping the seventh day holy, Exodus 28 through 11, they went and inserted Sunday, the first day of the week. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The passing of the time in 1844 was a period of great events opening to our astonished eyes the cleansing of the sanctuary transpiring in heaven and having decided relation to God's people upon the earth, also the first and second angel's messages and the third, unflooring the banner on which was inscribed the Ten Commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. One of the landmarks under 
This message was the temple of Elohim seen by his true loving people in heaven and the ark containing the law of Elohim. The light of the Sabbath of the fourth commandment flashed its strong rays in the path of the transgressors of God's law. The non-mortality of the wicked is an old landmark. I can call to mind nothing more that can come under the head of the old landmarks. All this cry about changing the old landmarks is all imaginary. CW 30, paragraph 2. There are the main pillars of our faith subjects which are of vital interest. The Sabbath, the keeping of the commandments of God, speculative ideas should not be agitated, for there are peculiar minds that love to get some point that others do not accept and argue and attract something to that one point, urging that point, magnifying that point, when it is really a matter which is not of vital importance and will be understood differently. The prophet continues, Twice I have been shown that everything of a character to cause our brother to be diver diverted from the very points now essential for this time should be kept in the background. CW 77, paragraph 1. Our faith in reference to the messages of the first, second, and third angels was correct. The great way marks we have passed are immovable. Although the host of hell may try to tear them from their foundation and triumph in the thought that they have succeeded, yet they do not succeed. These pillars of truth stand firm as the eternal heels, unmoved by all the efforts of men combined with those of Satan and his host. We can learn much and should be constantly searching the scriptures to see if these things are so. Your reference, the Review and Herald, November 27, 1883. In 1883, in the General Conference session, Ellen G. White rebuked the daylights out of all the officers of the world for changing her writings and rewriting her books. She was never authorized to rewrite her books. Not one moment, not one thought ever came across this prophet. A prophet never retracts and rewrites the message that was given to her or him. You don't do that. If that's the case, then that prophet would have been annihilated instantly. You don't trifle with God's word. But man has done that time and time again. And man shall pay for that. I'm referring to women and men who were involved in the changes of the prophet Alan G. White's original books. There might be a lot of you who are viewing and listening or might ignore it and turn it off. Well, then this message is not for you. But I know that you're listening and you're going to listen because you want heaven. You want eternal life. You want forgiveness. And you want to know Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let me give us another reference. In reading and in your hearing, Renewing Herald, Volume 5, page 110. The prophet says, That which I have written is what the Lord has bidden me write. I have not been instructed to change that which I have sent out in 1905. This work, ladies and gentlemen, is very important. Continuing. The scribes of God wrote as they were dictated by the Holy Spirit, having no control of the work themselves. January 22, 1880. Review and Help, Volume 1, page 216. This is what's happened. This is just a small little reference, my brothers and sisters, of truths that have been dictated by the prophet. God's people are now to have their eyes fixed on the heavenly sanctuary, where the final ministration of our great high priest in the work of the judgment is going forward where he is interceding for his people. The Review and Herald, November 27, 1883. In the General Conference session of 1883, there was such a turmoil that took place, ladies and gentlemen, that this lady that was once 12 matured into her 70s and rebuked these people. This is the truth that happened. Now, there are many other truths that will be coming out in regards to writers and editors and what they did in changing the writings. Yes, 
This is what they did. Does it matter? You better believe it. It does. Because nobody has the right to remove one jot or one tittle as it has been prophesied by the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. And if people have done that and will do that and continue to do it, then they will receive the seven last plagues that are written in the scroll. We continue. The seven pillars of our faith, the health message, state of the dead, spirit of prophecy, ones one, two, three, four, the sanctuary, Psalm 77, verse 13, the law of God, Exodus 20, 1 through 17, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 44, the victory over sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, Yeshua is faithful and just to cleanse us of our sins. Righteous by faith. John 3, 16. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Pillars and landmarks of our faith is very crucial and very important for the 144,000. In closing, the Moedines of Leviticus 23 is the foundation of his law. Out of this foundation comes the Ten Commandments, which is a summary of 613 laws, brothers and sisters. Statutes 2707, binding. Statutes 2708, binding in the feminine. Judgments 2707, binding in the feminine. Ordinances, binding 2707, binding. The seal of Yahweh's government is what I have just expressed and explored and shared with us today. What, I have, what we have given to you and to ourselves and myself is the foundation of his remnant. No one is going to be in the kingdom by violating these doctrines and these laws. You will not have it. And there will not be one person, I mean not one person, that will be in the kingdom not keeping the statutes. Therefore, brothers and sisters, ask your pastors, what's that mean? And if he doesn't know, then you go to your Bible, go to Concordance, go to your books. Not call us. He will give you the answers. The seal of Yahweh's government or the Moedines in Leviticus 23 is the foundation. Stands without impeachment and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. This is his foundation. This is what the 144,000 are preaching now to the end of time. And they themselves will be, and I repeat, they themselves will be the embodiment of his Torah. Will you be one of them? Our Heavenly Father who art in heaven, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we ask for your grace and your mercy. We claim Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Bind the Torah among your disciples that we may give this message. Bind the Torah among men and women. Bind the Torah in their frontal lobe that we may be a people proclaiming the three angels' messages. A people that come out of confusion, out of Babylon, out of nominal Christian churches, out of the nominal Adventist churches, out of the nominal families, out of Babylon. For yet the 144,000 are yet to come out of Babylon. For all churches of all the world have fallen. And out of all of this will come out the 144,000 who will resemble your character and live your Torah and your Moadines the fullest. You ask your imputed part of righteousness on your people, Yeshua HaMashiach, that we may be a people, that our names may be written in the book of life, and for thy sake, in the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen.